Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we are getting into Predator versus Wolverine. And from what I can tell, Marvel's doing something very different with the Predator now. Cause in this four part series, they're taking a turn from what's been previously done in the Marvel Predator entries. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so starting this out, we begin in Canada, present day, with an opening scene that's meant to seem like it's the end for Wolverine, cause he's in bad condition, his shoulders missing, blood's dripping, he's leaving a trail as far as the eye can see. And we're shown that he's being followed when three dots just appear on his head just seconds before he's nearly blasted again. And it's like now with the three dot targeting system, the heat vision perspective following him, and the shot from the plasma caster, we're given the clear indication of a predator closing in. And I really like the way that this is set up, because diving into this, Wolverine's thinking to himself about how they say that he's the best there is, but right now he doesn't feel that way. Now that he's the hunted, and he's the prey. Which takes us to the point where Wolverine's chased to the edge of a cliff in what's said to be the final moments of the hunt as he hides under the ledge. And one of the main reasons why I really like how this is done, it's cause this sets us up to continue following Wolverine's thoughts as they lead us into a sequence of flashbacks, which in my opinion is the best way to handle this cause Wolverine has such a long, rich past that allows for stories like this to be just trickled in throughout the years. But with how this is done, the first one takes us to the year 1900 when he was living in Alaska. And at this point in Wolverine's life, he's much younger. He still has the bone claws. And most of what he did for a living at the time was hunting and gathering, ice fishing, so he could sell the goods at local trades alongside of furs and things of that nature. Cause he's good at killing. So this occupation just came natural to him. Cause he also saw it as work that didn't require too much thinking. Cause also he remembers that he wasn't the type to set traps either. So he wasn't a trapper by trade. Cause for one, he didn't have the patience, but number two, he could make just as much, if not more by way of hunting. And when it came down to selling goods, he would only sell to make just enough money for him to get by and everything else he would keep in the bear cave. So no one in their right mind would go in there, which for him made it as good as a safe. And just after this, we're shown a predator landing its ship and traversing in this same general area. And though we're not told exactly why this predator has come here, soon after his arrival, we're kind of given an idea when he finds another predator who's been killed by the locals, which is crazy to see because it's a sign that predators have been around and hunting in the main Marvel universe, which I think is something that kind of kicked off with Marvel's 2022 six issue Predator series written by Ed Brisson. And I only say kind of, because that series references the events that took place in the films, making references to 1987, 1997, 2010, and 2018, while that series itself takes place in the year 2056. So though it's published by Marvel, I don't think it's trying to exist in the main Marvel universe, but instead both the 2022 and the recent 2023 series, they read like extensions of the films that expand the story yet exist in their own universe. And just to be clear, I'm not a Predator expert. There's a lot of Dark Horse Predator comics that I haven't read. So I'm not sure if there's things coming from those series into the new stories, but from what I've seen up until now, over the past year or so, Marvel's just been keeping the Predator universe to itself and off to the side, at least up until now. Cause with this story, it seems like that's changing and I'm not even mad at it. But as this Predator finds the other one here, he takes his shuriken and he uses it right away to hunt a number of different animals. And when he does, initially it comes off as if he's more so doing target practice before he goes out there and begins to hunt. Because when he starts throwing it, we see him miss a target before he hits one. And when he does, he goes for another and eventually it bleeds out. And just after this, he puts it away as he goes off to hunt other animals with the weapons that he brought, like his dagger, his wrist blades, and his combi stick as well. And when we see him use these weapons, he's way more efficient and precise. But after some time of it hunting these different animals within the local area, it notices some clouds of smoke coming from a nearby village. So it switches the heat vision, activates its cloak, and it goes to check it out. And as it would appear, upon a closer look, it seems like the hunters here were using the same spears that took down the other predator who was defeated. So this one goes to work at proving he was better than the last. 
And next, when we go back to Wolverine, we find that he's made his way to an outpost that's mostly populated by loggers, trappers, and miners, which at this time Wolverine would usually avoid unless he needs money or supplies. Cause though at the time Alaska was a place for a young Wolverine to run away to and start over, it also was considered to be the edge of the map. So it collected a number of people who were either trying to escape trouble or make some more. But while he's here, he's approached by this gentleman named Tucker who's initially just buying him drinks before asking for a moment of his time. But Wolverine just tells him, hey, you be smart to stay clear of me. So Tucker asks why, and he tells him it's cause things are about to get ugly, which is precisely what happens, like clockwork, as these two guys approach Wolverine because they know he's always got a lot to trade. So they hold him at gunpoint and ask him, where is he keeping his treasure? But to their surprise, Logan is more dangerous with a bottle of whiskey and a broken chair than they are with a pistol and a knife. And at one point, he stabbed the dude in the foot with his friend's knife, only to then go grab a saw and chop this guy's hand off. And they were done. But as Wolverine's leaving, he's chased down by Tucker, the other guy from inside, who's telling him the way that he handled those guys was remarkable and how Wolverine's just the person he needs. And with tears in his eyes, he lets him know that his son was kidnapped and being held for ransom in a cabin just 10 miles north of there. So Logan goes with them to head up to the cabin and save his son as the snowstorm picks up. But along the way, the horses get spooked and they run off, leaving them to head the rest of the way on foot. And with Wolverine picking up a scent from some nearby bushes, he goes to check it out, only to find a number of people and animals skinned and hung from their feet on the other side. Which for us, we know the predator did this because at times they'll skin their prey as a taunt or a showcase until they find something that's more worthy to hunt so that they can take their skull as a proper trophy. But with seeing this, Tucker, he's looking like he ain't know these guys were this crazy. And he tells Wolverine that it's the guys that they're after that did this. They're killers, they're monsters. So they continue to make their way, not knowing that the predator is watching their every step. And soon after, when they make their way to the cabin, Tucker tells Wolverine to be swift and show no mercy. And that's exactly what he does, kicking in the door, cutting and slicing these guys up left and right, demanding that they tell him where the kid is. And as soon as Wolverine's done killing every last one of them, he's shot in the back by Tucker, who then tells Wolverine that these guys were guns that he hired some time back to do jobs for him. But on the last job, Tucker commissioned a railroad robbery and these guys just kept the bonds and the cash. So he set this whole thing up just to rob them. And as he walks out the door, he gets his head blown clean off by the predator. And it's like, man, his karma got expedited. And as the predator goes to grab Tucker's headless body, Wolverine drops down and these two go at it. And in this fight, we get this moment where Wolverine cuts the predator just under its mask, like right under its chin. So it takes its bio mask off, giving Wolverine his first look at this thing. And he's like, whatever you are, I'm gonna carve the ugly off of you. And this predator just breaks off all three claws on one of his hands and impales him, which isn't fatal to Wolverine, but it gives us this really cool moment where the two of them are injured. So Wolverine limps outside to pull out the combi stick so his healing factor can take care of the rest while the predator opens up his medicom and treats his injuries. And at the same time, they both give off that primal scream, which all together adds the little things that make it really feel like a predator story. But after this, the young Wolverine, he takes off running. Cause even at this point in his life, he's seen a number of fights. And though he's not usually one to just run away from a fight, he does know if he's gonna win this one, he's gotta be smart. So what he does, he ends up running back to his safe or the cave where he keeps his stuff, luring the predator all the way there, just in front of the entrance, knowing that the bear would come out and pretty much take it from there. Which I will admit was a pretty clever move on Wolverine's part. Cause at this point in time, for him at least, he wasn't about to take this predator down by himself. And as the bear drags the predator inside the cave, young Wolverine celebrates this win just before he heads back into town. Cause there's a trade representative coming the next day. And the whole reason he was initially there was to meet them. But after he leaves, the predator walks out the cave, holding up the bear's head. And the first thing that I thought when I saw this was, man, if Wolverine had only heard that mystical freestyle, where Mystical was like, if you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear, cause that go need it. <laughs> Let me stop. I got a feeling some of y'all ain't even gonna know what I'm talking about, but it's all right. And after this, we jump forward years later to a time when Wolverine's memories weren't the best. After getting his mind wiped multiple times by Professor Thornton, paired with the rigorous training that Wolverine received while he was a member of Team X. 
which was a small group of CIA mutant operatives that Wolverine served with between the years of 1961 and 1968 working under the radar as a small army. And though this team seems a little different, I'm sure it's just to serve the purpose for this specific story that's coming. Cause at this time, when we find them in South America, Wolverine remembers saying that their intel told them guerrilla forces were planning a coup. A former general was storing weapons and rallying support from a jungle stronghold. We were supposed to make sure he never came to power. Everything was sleepy and quiet at dawn. Once we took out the sentry, it would be easy pickings, or so we thought. Cause when they move in, these guys are already dead and skinned, which triggers the memory for Wolverine about the Predator. Cause after all the memory wiping and the fake memories being planted between missions, he may have forgotten about the Predator, but the Predator didn't forget about him. As the net gun goes off, trapping Cruel. And as Wolverine looks up, he sees that not only is the Predator back, but this time he's brought reinforcements. Cause now there's four of them. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.